Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Hey guys, I hope you're doing really well in this moment in time. And that whenever and wherever you happen to be on this wild and crazy space-time continuum, that you are able to accept the future now. Now what does that mean? Well, we know we've talked about being here in the here and now. And we've talked about, you know how the past and the future and all of it's happening at once. That's what all the deep ancient spiritual books have said for over 4,000, if not 10,000 years. And we've also known that scientists are also now saying, well, pretty much it's all happening now, but they've come up with the theory of time crystals a few years back. And now they've actually found time crystals And, uh, according to my, um, episode just, I, what, two or three weeks ago where I interviewed or channeled basically prime creator of the universe itself, (laughs) God, he said, what did he say that there are time anchors on this planet? And that's why we experience time differently here than maybe somebody would on other planets and definitely we're different than how people experience time in other dimensions. But when I say the future is here now, I'm talking about something a little bit, maybe more mundane, but also super exciting. Now, I don't know what Stephen Greer is going to do with his life after this. He's all about disclosure. He and many other people have been for years, for decades, have been pushing the agenda for disclosure of space aliens for the disclosure that UFOs do not come from this earth, from the disclosure that extraterrestrials are real and exist, and they're part of a galactic federation. (laughs) Oh my gosh, you guys. I mean, I have been channeling the Andromedans. I have been channeling the Arcturians. I have been channeling the Pleiadians, and I've been channeling the Lyrans. I have been channeling beings that are a part of a greater force called the Galactic Federation, or as a lot of us know it uh, to be, is the Galactic Federation of Light. It is a group or faction or... (laughs) It's beyond a club. You know, it's, it's like the governments of countries on planets and government of planets. And I don't even know what it all involves or entails. I just know that about two years ago I was contacted and the past two years have been wild. I first heard about the galactic federation about three or four years ago. I heard a few people talking about it and I thought that's a sweet idea. That's nice. They say they're channeling. I hope it's real. I hope it's true. And some of the people were channeling things that weren't quite sounding correct. And some people were channeling things that were like, woo, flash, bang, bam, out of the blue, out of the clear blue sky, out of the clear blue ether. This information's coming down the pike and it's, it it feels real. It's hitting in a way that I feel like, you know what? Um, that makes a hell of a lot of sense. So I've been questioning since the beginning, since I've been channeling these beings, I thought, Hey, who knows? Maybe, uh, there's something wrong with my brain. Maybe I've got a tumor or something. Maybe, you know, who knows? Maybe, I don't know. I wasn't really, you know, completely believing it in the beginning. And then the more the information started coming out, it's stuff that there's no way I could have thought of. There's no way I could have imagined or visualized this stuff on my own. I'm a creative person in some ways, but in other ways, not so much. 
No, not to the point of what are we going to have in the future as far as technology. So all this stuff has been coming around and I've gotten information that other uh, channelers who I consider to be reputable of the Galactic Federation beings of light, um, they're not really coming up with the same stuff as me. They're coming up with different stuff, different pieces of the puzzle, as it were. And so we've had to go on faith a lot on this show, but, (laughs) and a lot on, you know, in our spiritual journeys, but this show is not only faith based. I'm not a religious person. Um, I have a religion, but I don't talk about it much, just a little bit every now and again. Um, but I don't really come from a religious place. I come from a metaphysical and a spiritual place. And, um, somebody asked me today about, what is metaphysics and why do I call myself metaphysical soul speak? What's the name of the show? What's going on? But first let's get to this because I wanted to get this out of the way. Uh, The Jerusalem post mentioned that a former Israeli space security chief named Chaim Eshed, hopefully I'm pronouncing his name right, has revealed that aliens from a galactic federation have been in contact with the United States and Israel for years but humanity is not ready to know this. Well, that says, or so he claims. Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, this is on Twitter. This has been like the trending topic now for two days. And I, I sent this to a few of you, um, that have contacted me about stuff like this. <laughs> and you guys know I've been channeling Michael Sherhan, Ashtar, Michael Sherhan. Ashtar is kind of like the commander or the general, you know, of the Pleiadian light forces. You know, the Pleiadians, it's just Pleiadian, you know, the Pleiadians from what we consider the Pleiades, the seven stars that we call the seven sisters up in the sky. I mean, that's where these people are coming from, but they're from a different dimension and they're interdimensional beings. And there are, I think more physical beings, but there's a galactic federation that has been in contact with the governments apparently for years. Now they've been in contact with, and with me, Elena, for two years via telepathy. So it's very deeply metaphysical. And um, somebody was asking me today, what what is the definitions of metaphysics? The way that I, my operative definition of this word in the way that I use it in my show is such. I want to know the point or the juncture at which uh, science meets spirituality. So when we're thinking something, we're feeling something, we're thinking that that this is our spiritual journey, our spiritual path, and we're having ascension symptoms and we're like, Oh gosh, we, we don't know what, why we go to the doctor and the doctor says there's nothing there, but what's the scientific reality that lets us know that what we're feeling spiritually is real. And we know that there are certain things coming down the pike. We know that there's cosmic radiation. We know that there's solar radiation. And we know we're recently, recently understanding that when the sun hiccups a big fat plasma ball and hurls it at the earth, we know that 6.4 earthquakes are sure to follow. We know that there's aurora borealis in the sky, so it's affecting the upper atmosphere. And we know that it's affecting the uh, rising of the oceans, the moon and the sun and all the ways in which our galaxy and our planet is spinning. That's affected, I mean, affecting the tides. Well, when our bodies are 80% water, how the hell do you think it's affecting us? Right? And we know that sometimes when we get hit by plasma or solar wind or cosmic radiation, some of us are very highly sensitive to energy. And we're being told by the Galactic Federation of Light Beings that we are affected by this stuff. And they're telling us and showing us, but then scientists are coming out going, people are starting to feel nauseated when the Schumann resonance changes. People are starting to feel like gastritis and having ringing in the ears when it goes up. People are feeling this in their bodies. And so for me, my personal definition of what metaphysics really is, is where it's the juncture, which science and spirituality meet where they meet in the middle. Meta means middle in, in, um, (laughs) it literally means in the middle meta. 
metatarsals. It's the tarsals between the bones at the end of your foot and the bones at the beginning of your foot. Meta is the meaning in the middle. It's the Latin definition of meta. Means just means middle in Latin. So <laughs> for me, what is metaphysics? Metaphysics is where science and spirituality meet in the middle and they have an agreement. They have an accord. And that's what we talk about. That's why I'm always talking about so many scientific things and how it's affecting us spiritually and why I talk about spiritual things. And then I look for the scientific basis in reality that will prove that we're going through what we say we're going through. And that's where I I like to look at, at these things. I also like to know where the divine meets us and where we meet the divine in everyday life. I just want to look at everything, whether it's scientific or spiritual, but I want to look at it from a spiritual point of view. So I say I'm spiritual, not religious, but I'm also interested in science. So this is why Maybe why the, the podcast isn't growing because people are like, what? But I've just find this over and over again. And a lot of you get it. A lot of you get me and you understand that. I like to view things from a different, I'm an INTJ. You know, if, if you know anything about Enneagrams, which someday we'll get, we'll get to that. But I mean, I cover things like metaphysics and spirituality. And also I cover science and health issues. And I always take it that one step further though. You know, if we're going to talk about healthy, health related things, such as feng shui, which seems to be very spiritual, it is very spiritual. And it's also very scientific in the way that it approaches things. So anyway, I have been questioned today about this and I just feel like it shakes my faith a little bit until I start to redefine it for myself and look at my definitions. And, and if I tell you guys, then you're going to get the show a little more and you're going to understand who am I and where I'm coming from. Because I like the proof. I mean, oh my God, the Galactic Federation, it's proof. <laughs> when someone in the government who just steps down and then says, by the way, aliens are real. I don't think that aliens are supernatural. I think that they're beings created by the one creator, the aliens themselves, the extraterrestrials themselves, the off-worlders, the interdimensionals are telling me themselves that they're created by God the same as you, the same as me, the same as your dog, and the same as my cat. Same as the plants that we eat <laughs> and the meat that some of us don't eat, <laughs> right? You know, everything is created by God. There's nothing that's conceivable in this universe that is not created by God, the prime creator, the primal cause, the primal will to good that creates and sustains the universe and created all things. So that's what the show is about. For those of you who are brand new and just tuning in, we just hit 109,000 listens just today. So I want to thank those of you who have been with me for a while and stuck around and thank those of you who are brand new. So welcome if you are new and you want to hear more about what the heck this stuff is and why, why am I talking to you sometimes about, you know, space aliens and extraterrestrials and other times I'm talking about God and spiritual stuff. And I'm talking about meditation. And I'm talking about relationships because from my personal perspective, Everything has a spiritual basis in reality and everything has a scientific way that we can approach it. So we can be practical and impractical at the same time. And does that sound to you a little bit like maybe it's willy nilly? Not really to me because I see everything in this world, everything in this universe as holistic. Everything affects everything else. Many people were approached right after the nuclear weapons testing on the planet Earth. Many people that were in the spiritual communities, channelers and the like, people were getting dreams and people were getting messages from beings from other dimensions saying, you just affected all of us because we're all interconnected. 
twin particles, twin particles. That's, that's, uh, when one particle has an effect or a change, the other particle, no matter if it's across the street, five inches away or across the universe will have the same change because they're twins, twin flames, same thing. I smell when my, uh, twin flame is smoking a cigarette. I smell him when he's barbecuing meat, when he's excited about eating and that emotion is transmitted into my body. That's twin particles inside twin flames. It's spiritual within scientific, scientific within spiritual. It's always, everything is connected. Everything is interconnected. And when you start to have a higher mind of these things and you start to have a higher consciousness, you're going to start seeing that I'm right. If you haven't gotten there yet, you will eventually get there. You'll eventually arrive and go, oh yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, so, now some people think that metaphysics is only a science and it shouldn't have anything to do with spiritual shows. But I'm going to tell you, um, according to at least Pierce, he says that he divides uh, metaphysics into three categories. So the three major categories of metaphysics are number one, ontology or general metaphysics, uh, two, psychical or religious metaphysics, and three, physical metaphysics, which is like just very much science. Me, I'm right there in the middle <laughs> with the psychical or religious metaphysics. Now, we talk about religion once in a while um, as it pertains to spirituality. And we try to unravel some of our stuff as we become deeper and deeper into our own spiritual path, our own metaphysical path where spirituality and science meet because we are spiritual beings having a pretty scientific experience. Whether you know it or not, your body is going through scientific processes each and every day of your life. You're digesting food. You're going through sleep cycles. You're going through hormonal changes and cycles. There's a lot of physical things happening in your body. And a lot of times it's connected to your psyche. And in the ancient Greek, um, from the ancient Greek writings, the word psyche means soul. And psychology is a study of the soul or the study of the psyche. And then a lot of people go, well, that just means your mind. But where does your mind really come from? Is it your brain? No, that's scientific, right? Your brain is scientific, but your soul is something more. It's an overlaying. If your soul did not overlay your physical scientific body, then you, you couldn't animate your body. You need your soul. Right. So that's what this show is all about. And I haven't really mentioned it in a while, but I am talking always about the second definition of metaphysics out of the three main ones, according to Pierce, the psychical or religious metaphysics. So where science and spirituality meet in the middle, because <laughs> like I said, meta in Latin means middle. So I had and in, <laughs> I had uh, an incredibly funny question from Hannah. Now, uh, I have started this uh, part of the show where people write questions to me and I'm going to answer them on the air and mention your name. And if you want to download the Anchor app, you can send me up to a one minute clip asking your question. And it doesn't have to be about, it it could be about me. It could be about uh, my philosophy or beliefs or just about something spiritual. And if I can answer it and put it on the air, I will. Right. So Hannah and her friend were hanging out together and, and, um, I think they were listening to my show when all of a sudden a silverfish drops from the ceiling in between them on the bed. Oh my God. Ah! (laughs) What is a silverfish being? A silverfish is a an insect. If you don't know, it, it looks it's the color silver, and it looks like a fish. It has primordial like antenna and legs, and it moves kind of in undulating fashion. Now, last year I did a show about uh, the spiritual significance of the creepy crawlies in your life. 
<laughs> I think that might be the name of it. And so I had to listen to it. I listened to it yesterday. I was like, I got to answer this question. And I looked it up. I, I actually looked it up. What does silverfish mean? Because I, I, I thought, I, I know I did this. I know I covered this on the show last year. And I channeled God and channel prime creator talking about these different insects. Like what are the spiritual meanings? And God himself said, look, these things can have thousands of meanings, you know? And then we go back to the course of miracles, which we covered last year and part of this year where uh, nothing has any meaning and nothing has any meaning unless I give it meaning, right? Nothing has any meaning except for the meaning I give it. So, First of all, Hannah, you and your friend might have to decide and decipher for yourself with this silver fish, what it means for you. Is the color silver um, something special? Um, Silver in Spanish means plata, which is also another way of saying money. You know, so maybe there's something money's going to fall from the sky for you that maybe that's your definition. (laughs) Money's going to undulate on your bed. No, wait, that's not what I mean. I'm kidding. (laughs) <laughs> what well, like what is it? Okay, so I when I when I channeled God last year and I was having silver fish in my bathroom, uh God told me what a silver fish is, and they usually tend to hang out in places with moisture. My son told me yesterday that, that they eat hair, which I thought that was kind of crazy. I did not know that. That I have long hair, now I'm scared. Maybe I want to wear a long hat from now on. (laughs) Tie my hair up because, ew, yuck. But um, I looked up the definition of it. But when, but first, what I did is I listened to my episode last last year, the creepy crawlies. (laughs) And silverfish are a creature that, if you have water magic. They will appear because the water spirits are trying to contact you. They have a message for you or they want to work with you in a magical way or they want to give you um, something from their realm. Now, where do you find water spirits? Well, you find them in every water, period. Whether you have a water bottle or you turn on the tap or you go to the ocean, there are water spirits. They're called elementals and they're all around you. But we don't always see them, right? But we're not always aware of them. And if they're trying to make you aware that they exist and they're there, whether it's um, mermaid energies or undines or naiads who I happen to love. Naiads are little tiny river creatures. They only hang out in rivers and they're, they look like little mermaids with wings. And there's many times I've thought when I saw a, um, a dragonfly go by me that I thought maybe that might be an undane <laughs> a couple times. I think they can, I mean, a naiad, I think that an, and I think undines are like naiads, but they're bigger and they're very small. They're like the size of a dragonfly. Naiads are adorable. And um, I, I've always loved naiads. Anyway, um, which I think if you take that word naiad and you flip it, it's Diana. Diana is the goddess of the moon, and the moon is, well, silver. And here you go, silverfish. So it is a direct connection, and you can make um, all kinds of connections uh, spiritually and metaphysically, but also. Let's go to somebody else's spiritual definition because maybe this will be the one that is the one for you. So let me go ahead and see if I can't get to that screen here on my tablet. Because I I was really interested in this. I I thought, well, you know, and it did say something on one of the websites I looked at. It said that they are uh, connected to the goddess and to feminine energy and feminine spirituality. And it says silver bugs or silverfish bugs, dream meanings and hidden dreaming.com. It says that they can portend enjoyment, devotion, and amity, which is another fancy way of saying friendship, which is funny that this Hannah, you and your friend, you're seeing there enjoying your friendship. And here comes a bug that symbolizes friendship falling between you. <laughs> Maybe you're going to go into business together. I mean, it's also silver. Silver does relate to money, coin money, 
cold hard cash, literally the cold hard part of our cash is tends to be silver, right? So, I, I mean, there's a lot of different ways you could take the meaning of your choice, the thing that means the most to you. Now, I don't as- ascribe to the idea that all, you know, dream dictionaries are going to tell you what your dreams mean. I mean, it might give you a hint or push you in the right direction, but your dream symbolism is unique on, only unto you. And there are dream symbols that are part of the collective unconscious, as Carl Jung puts it, noted psychologist. <laughs> And he was really spiritual and wild and funny. He had a lot of funny things happen to him that just set him off on this spiritual path where science and spirituality meet again. He was very metaphysical according to the second definition of what metaphysics are. So anyway, um, let's see what else do we find there was some other things. Oh, and it's funny cause I looked up the spiritual significance of silverfish and listennotes.com comes up with literally a link to my show. <laughs> I'm like, I don't think a lot of people are talking about silverfish. It's kind of strange, but um so other there are other definitions. Let's see, I, I can't find it right now, but they they said talk a person or situation relating to um the goddess or having trouble relating to the bigger picture was something I came across. I don't know if that's what they mean or if that was just a general uh, thing on that website, but silverfish as a spirit guide, it said that and I clicked on that and it was a fake website. So don't click on that. If you go looking for it, um, but I looked that up and it does say good luck bugs. And it comes from a cultural perception, of course, so that might be something symbolic meanings.com. We'll see. We'll go there and, and see what we can see about that. But I thought this was really strange. So before we get into, you know, today's, um, uh, topic and before we get into the space, uh, weather.com stuff. Okay. Uh, good luck bugs. Let's see. I don't know if he has a list. Oh, he's showing you, of course, butterflies. You know, everyone thinks butterflies are good luck. Now, crickets aren't all that pretty, but they are considered good luck in China. And you, crickets are awesome. If you have one outside your house or inside your house, it will stop chirping if someone approaches. So that's how you know if, if the cricket's quiet, it's like, okay, now I know that uh, someone's approaching. And, and now I going to answer the door or run to the back. I don't know. I don't know how you guys uh, react to when someone knocks randomly on your door. The crickets are, are kind of like watchdogs in China. Um, I've read cool stories about that. Um, so anyway, so crickets, let's see, they're probably not going to say they're saying ladybugs. Yeah. Ladybugs are good. Praying mantises always show up when they're trying to tell me to pray more. <laughs> Uh, caterpillars, that means you're going to undergo a transformation. Bees means you're going to work together with other people. Yeah, it doesn't, it's like funny. It, it doesn't say silverfish as a good luck symbol. I consider them more good luck. They're not poisonous. They're not dangerous. They're not something that are going to hurt you. They're just something that freaks you out when you see it. It's like, ah, you know, it's like, ah, yuck, I, you know. And I, I always have a lot of little silverfish around here. In fact, I have not seen one in a while, and um, I did catch my cat eating one, though. No. <laughs> so I, that, that might be why they're, they're like, well, let's blow this popsicle stand because, you know, the cat, <laughs> the cat's going to eat us. Anyway, so there you go, uh, Hannah. I hope that is adequate for the explanation. If you have another question about it, let me know. And we'll address it um, again later in the week. So yesterday was a wild day for me. I mean, we've had a lot of crazy energies coming down the pike. And a lot of us are suffering um, symptoms that aren't really tied to anything at all. Except what we can only imagine is our spiritual path heating up. The energy is coming in. And we're pulling more and more energy into our bodies. And as we do so, we're having physical or scientifically based symptoms, even though we have no cause, right? So uh, gastritis has been a big deal 
lately, um, intestinal discomfort, stomach issues, anything to do with the digestion, um, has been coming up big time ear ringing, a lot of moodiness and argumentative energy are, uh, coming up so that they can be lifted up and out. Uh, anger was in the beginning of the week and now it's a little bit more, um, evened out a little bit as they say. I I even saw some spiritual posts on Instagram yesterday where people were mentioning anger out of nowhere that had nothing to do with the post, had nothing to do with videos people are putting up, and have nothing to do with um, the artwork or anything. It's just like suddenly random people are saying, hey, you know, you shouldn't be angry at people or anger's coming up or so I've noticed that people want to talk more about that because it's coming up for them. And if it's coming up for you, it's something that is usually anger to hurt, you know, like that's covered up by the bandage called anger. You know, it's something that like my friend said, his anxiety is caused by unexpressed rage absolute rage and deep, deep seated anger and it's causing anxiety. So, I mean, for me, my anxiety doesn't come from that. Anxiety can come from a few different, you know, things, but that's something that my friend has told me several times. It's like, wow, that's intense. I did not know that. So when he can't express himself, so for him, maybe it might be connected. The anger might be connected to his throat chakra because he was unexpressing, not expressing it. And a lot of people, um, that have, um, loneliness issues cause they're not in love. They don't have a, a partner and they feel pressure to do so might feel the anxiety as loneliness, right. In, in or tied to the heart chakra. So you could have anxiety, I think, and I might have to explore this a little further. Anxiety might be an emotion that is tied to, um, your body in different ways it might be tied to different chakras in different ways and it might express or unexpress in different ways depending but that is something that's come up massive amounts of anxiety and I'm I'm going to have to really delve into this and look into it because and ask prime creator about this because maybe we're calling anxiety anxiety, but, but we don't know where it comes from. And when we don't know where it comes from, we don't know how it's affecting us spiritually, you know, and the scientists are going to say, take a pill. So we got to meet in the middle somewhere and see, you know, I, I have physical, uh, things I've told you guys to do for anxiety that seems random and comes up out of nowhere. And I have had, uh, shows that I've, that I've talked about this before, you know, because there's, we are all like my approach to life is a holistic approach. And that's why I coined the phrase, we, the Pepsi bodies, we have to worry about the Pepsi bodies all the time and not really worry about them in a way that brings us anxiety, but we need to deal with our Pepsi bodies in a way that we are, um, checking in with ourselves, right? So physical would be first and emotional followed by psychological and spiritual uh, bodies of the individual or, you know, the individual parts or components of our life and what makes up human life. Because these are the things that we're, we're kind of juggling with and sometimes struggling with as we go along our spiritual path and journey. And, you know, just living in and of itself is our spiritual path. You know, you might not have ever heard of spirituality or even God, and you're living this in, in this world that seems very hardcore materialistic and scientific, meaning materialistic, meaning just the material world where everything feels solid. It's not really, but it feels solid. I mean, quantum mechanics, quantum physics, um, pretty much says that we're not really living in a world that's solid at all. In fact, in every atom, there's a mass of very little quantity and the rest of it is a vast majority of just empty space. What is emptiness? It's really strange, right? Anyway, so I wanted to give you guys this. First of all, the silverfish question is the last thing I just did. And I wanted to talk about the Galactic Federation of Light being a real thing at least having some kind of disclosure 
So it's funny that, I mean, for years we've thought about it. We've heard about it. We've believed or wanted to believe that it's real. And now here we go. And so when I say future now, we want to have the future now. Are you ready? I think about what is the future in your mind, in your child mind, when you're very little and the teacher says, what do you think you're going to do 50 years from now? And we're all thinking, well, we're going to be flying around in our cars. Obviously we're going to use our replicators to create money and not have to work. Obviously. Right. I mean, for me, that those are some of the things I thought about, you know, I'm going to be like the Jetsons. I'm going to have a robot do all my chores for me, you know, and, and I'm going to, go grocery shopping or go to work in my, my spaceship. It just seems normal, right? (laughs) Especially when I watched, uh, I watched the Flintstones. I thought, well, that's our past. I watched the Jetsons. That's our future. So when I say that you have to be ready to accept the future as now, the future might be that kind of a world might be that kind of a life, which would be absolutely incredible. So hopefully that will be, (coughs) you know, where we're headed now that the Galactic Federation is a real thing, which that's, I say that tongue in cheek because we all knew it was real. I mean, there's many, many shows um, that talk about this on Gaia, not just Cosmic Disclosure, but several shows, including George Norrie. He's uttered the words Galactic Federation before. In fact, Coast to Coast AM just put out today a, a little news article about this. I mean, the whole internet is buzzing about the fact that the Galactic Federation is real and that extraterrestrials are real. So now that we know and the cat's out of the bag, what does that mean? (laughs) It means that a lot of us spiritual types who went on faith and believed in this stuff were kind of vindicated today, right? We feel a little less crazy if we were feeling crazy before. You know, feeling like, well, maybe I'm, there's something wrong. No, there's nothing wrong with you. No, you're not crazy. I'm not crazy. We all knew it. I've met other people that the Galactic Federation, like Michael Sheerhan of Ashar Command and the Palladians, he put me in touch with somebody who he also contacted years ago, four years ago. And when I started being contacted by him and then he brought us together, on a, 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 a social media platform and we became friends. We met like last year and we talk every now and again. I just sent him the article yesterday and he's like, that's incredible. Finally, finally, because what did Michael Sheerhan say over the past two years through me? He said, we are going to be contacted and, and he said, our light ships are going to be in the sky. And all the spiritual people that meditate and pray for this to happen and and saying, guys, come on down. We want to meet you. We want the future. We want the future. We want it to be here now. So guess what? I hope that you guys are prepared for that because with this wild disclosure and the way that it just came down, like what? Oh my gosh. It came through Israel. That's strange. I need to look into the spiritual significance of this. <laughs> so here we go, guys. Here it is. Here it is. Anyway, let's get to spaceweather.com. And uh, I don't know what happened. Why am I not on this? Here we go. How to get to that page. Okay. By the way, yesterday, I I wanted to tell you guys these wild holidays. This is like a super fun thing I'm doing for December. Um, Yesterday was uh, National Brownie Day. I don't know what that means, National Brownie. Does that mean eating brownies? Because if so, we got to make up for it and have one for today and yesterday. (laughs) Or does it mean brownies like the little little, um, elementals? that uh, work with dirt farmers. If you're going to farm in dirt, there's little beings that might come to you energetically, or you might be able to see them physically. If they want you to see them, then you can. They're little brownies. Or the, the, or the brownies are the little girls, before they become Girl Scouts, they're brownies. The Brownie Scouts. I don't know what that means, National Brownie Day. I would like to say, I hope, brownies mean the, the chocolate 
delectable treat. I don't know, but that was yesterday, National Brownie Day. Take it in the ear day. (laughs) Oh, I don't even know what that means. Take it in the ear day. It's an official on the books holiday that nobody understands what it means. I can only guess at what that might mean. Now, I, I mean, these are, these are the December 8th days. Now the December 7th, I forgot to tell you guys that was letter writing day, national cotton candy day. And it says, would you like some fairy floss? So here we go. The, uh, there seems to be today a little bit of an element <laughs> of the elementals. The fairies are coming through. They wanted to be acknowledged right now because I keep getting stuff about fairies all day long. And also yesterday, or the December 7th, was International Civil Aviation Day, as well as Pearl Harbor Day, which I did mention. So, um, I don't know. Over the weekend, of course, we had Bathtub Party Day, Repeal Day. Uh, which I did talk about bartender appreciation day, St. Nicholas day, mitten tree day, put on your own shoes day. (laughs) So these days are wild, right? So anyway, take it in the ear day. What do you guys suppose that means? I think oral something orally, (laughs) a U R a L such as listening to binaural beats or isochronic tones. That might be something you want to do. All right, so there we have it with that. Um, all righty. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so spaceweather.com. We always like to start with the... Uh, the solar wind speed is 431.3 kilometers per second. And there was a coronal mass ejection heading for us, and guess what? It's getting ready to hit. And by the time you hear this, it will be hitting. So the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, which we've already talked about. There's only one sunspot facing the Earth right now, and that is 2790, which is absolutely active with solar flares. Just sent us that CME towards Earth that will be hitting us right now, today or tomorrow. And the neutron counts are high at 9%, which is a 0.7% raised in the past 48 hours and there is right now currently solar wind flowing from the coronal hole which is reaching earth right as i speak there were 45 fireballs on december 8th according to the nasa all sky camera and all sky fireball network so if you're looking for our space brothers and sisters to come down um, with their spiritual messages you might instead catch a fireball in the sky so, all right, that's uh, 35 sporadic, five sigma hybrids, three geminids, and two November omega orionids. So, uh, let me see. That is our space weather for today. I'm, I'm wondering now, you know, everything affects us, right? And everything affects everything else. And I wonder how those fireballs affect us energetically. If any of you have had any experience with that, if you've seen a fireball, if it felt different somehow to you, I'd like to know about it. I want you guys to write me at mermaidgirl888 on Instagram and let me know how that affects you if you've ever seen a fireball. Like if you've ever been in the vicinity in which a fireball has been. Now I remember seeing one and I was like really shocked and excited and it was a green fireball and I actually felt it in my heart chakra. I think I was very excited to see it. Like, ooh, ooh, what is that? I was so excited. I saw it with my husband when we were moving to Northern California, and it was green. It was like an emerald green, and I felt like, I think that it's a sign that I'm on the right path, which is weird, but that's the way I took it. I felt like it was a good omen. That's my emotional um, and spiritual take on, on fireballs. But so there it is. Uh... Schumann Resonance for the Heart Math Institute, they're always like a day and a half behind. So we'll see um, what they had to say for themselves for Sundays. Hopefully, I had it queued up, so now I've got to re-queue it up. 
I wanted to apologize for not getting the, these shows out on time. I've had a, a, a hard couple days. My gastritis that I just mentioned in the Ascension Symptoms section, uh, I had really bad uh, acid reflux um, in the middle of the night. And it creeped up into the back of my sinuses. Thank God bypassing my lungs. I must not have been breathing in at that moment. And it it creeped up into the back of my sinuses and the acid just kind of sat there in my sinuses. And you could kind of tell my sign, I'm kind of nasally today and in the back of my throat and it inflamed my throat. I couldn't talk almost the whole day yesterday. I mean, up until about three or four in the afternoon, it started to clear up a little bit. And in the evening, when I finally was able to read Monday's, the second half of Monday's show, that's when I was finally able to um, put the show out because I couldn't, it, it really affected me. So that when I say there's gastritis problems, uh, and by the way, apple cider vinegar and water is what I use to get rid of this. And it was like, is my fault for not doing that before I went to sleep? Last night I did. And I slept through the night and had no gastritis issues. I had no acid reflux issues. So if you're taking anything like uh, Tums or Rolaids or, um, you know, Zantac, is it Zantac? You know, the one that the, the pharmacists say, oh, yeah, just take this. And, and it reduces acid in your stomach. You don't want to do that. You want to take more acid and close that valve anyway. So I, I talk about health stuff once in a while because it does affect us emotionally as well as spiritually. Um, you know, if you... If your body is doing things that you can't function or focus on your meditation, you know, so that's one reason why I tend to bring that up. So, okay. So Sunday, let's see where we're at. What was going on with, um, I'm sorry. I'm trying to find it now. Sunday at the 2300 hour. I'm almost there. <laughs> almost there. Okay. Um, boom. Here we go. So tw- the 2300 hour Sunday, this is Schumann resonance news from around the world. According to HeartMath.org, which is the heart math Institute. Uh, California was at 65 Hertz frequency. Hafuf Saudi Arabia was at zero Hertz frequency. Of course, this again, by the way, Schumann resonance scale, which is normally at 7.83. That's the scientific baseline. But as it goes up, 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 it's propelling us. Well, we are being propelled into the fifth dimension, which starts at 40 Hertz frequency. And yet a lot of these are above 40. So (laughs) it's kind of some scientific proof that we're spiritually correct in our assumption that we are going up and resonating and vibrating at a higher rate. So, okay. uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Lithuania was at 122 hertz frequency and Alberta, Canada was at 74 hertz frequency. Northland, New Zealand was at 54 hertz frequency. And last but not least, Louis, South Africa was at 264 hertz frequency on the Schumann resonance scale. So it looks like we are going up, up, up in vibration. And so this is a point at which science and spirituality meet. And let's see, where were we at? On uh, the Italian website, disclosurenews.it. I'm looking to see where we're at here. Waiting for the page itself to load. All right, so I am a day behind. I'm going to try to get two episodes out tonight so that I'll be completely back (laughs) tomorrow for Thursday's episode. I I, I keep, you know, every day when I I ask God, what are we going to do today? What are we going to talk about? And this is kind of a metaphysical show, but also it's a variety show. And I talk about a wide variety of topics and how it relates back to spirituality and metaphysics. And... God said, let's do a show on fingernails. I'm like, oh my God, that sounds so boring. (laughs) So I'm still doing a little bit of research into this, but what health issues you might have by looking at your fingernails and you're like, 
looking, you can look at your hands and go, wow, because we do palm reading. Sometimes I've done several palm reading episodes, you know, where your, your hand is physically showing where you're at spiritually. And so we're going to talk a little bit about health and then I'm going to relate that back to the chakras. So we have the, you know, the scientific along with the spiritual and where it meets in the middle. And as your body is where you meet in the middle between, you know, the physical world and the spiritual world. So anyway, here we go. Um, and another, uh, ascension symptom I've noticed today is having the inability to see correctly. My eyes are very fuzzy lately. So here we go. Um, I'm waiting for the page to load. Ah, it's so annoying. Why is it not loading? It does say uh, eight was the um, number. I'm trying to say, okay, yeah, 11 and eight. I knew there was another number there. So yeah, 11 and eight. It's not very high. Usually the Italian site is not very intense. It's usually not terribly, uh, high, but then last week it threw us for a whammy when it went to 11,000 Hertz frequency. And then it went back down to 800 and then 500. So I want to just really check this with a fine tooth comb to see what's happening here. Um, yeah. Okay. So it says 20, but then also, 200 in the past 48 hours. So we've had 220, 7.5. It's been kind of all over the map. 14 hertz frequency, 7.47. So just right above, just slightly above normal, the scientific baseline. So if you've been feeling emotionally like you're all over the map and you're sensitive to energy, that could be a scientific explanation of what you're going through spiritually you know again the metaphysical connection so there we have it all right i'm going to take a quick break guys and when i come back we are going to uh talk about your health and how it relates to emotionally and well all your bodies rather you know and spiritually but how can you tell you having a health issue When you look at your fingernails, I'm going to look at this from a spiritual uh, way too. I'm going to look it up on um, like from palm reading websites as well as medical websites, right? We're going to look at this from a few different angles. (laughs) All right. Right after this quick little musical interlude. guys so I thought for sure I had done something on fingernails before and I wanted to tie the health issues that you can have um, show up in the tips of your fingers but also I was thinking I would look up palmistry and fingers and I found out that there is literally a type of divination that one can do using only your fingertips. And this is a revelation to me, (laughs) possibly to you guys. And I am going to get into that after I get into health things, because as you know, we're going through this global pandemic, yada, yada, yada. (laughs) And you need to know a few things about fingernails and what they can reveal about your health. And they will tell you with, uh, I guess some quick perusals, if you're deficient in things like zinc, that actually boosts your immune system. So, all right. Uh, there are eight things that, uh, fingernail textures can, uh, tell you about your health. And then we're going to get into 
uh, the mystical side of things. So here we go. Um, you could look for uh, pitting, ridging, discoloration, transverse grooving, and longitudinal grooving, basically lines that are kind of deep going up and down or across, and changes in the thickness and the surface texture of your nails. Now I'm going to add one thing that they're not talking about is if the skin underneath the fingernail, you know, if you don't have nail polish on, of course, if it looks blue or purple, it can mean that you're cold or that you are lacking in oxygen. And if you think it might be the latter, please look at your toenails and see if they're turning blue or purple because again, cold or lack of oxygen. And if you're having like a lack of oxygen and you're having trouble breathing with asthma or uh, congestion in your lungs and or sinus issues, you are going to want to go see a doctor immediately because you might need to go on uh, medication. I know that when my nails turn blue, it's time for me to take prednisone because my body is not receiving enough oxygen. I live at 8,400 feet above sea level, which is higher than the Mile High City in Denver, Colorado. And I know for a fact that that is dangerous. You know, when when your nails are turning blue, that is the first sign of, um, well, lack of oxygen at high elevation, which can actually cause death. (laughs) But since I've lived here for three years, I'm not going to die from the high elevation, but Who's to say I wouldn't from lack of oxygen, right? So that's a very dangerous sign, and it's not listed in this little Healthline article, which is healthline.com if you want to look it up. And I'm not going to read the whole article, but here you go. Uh, Nail health, uh, symptom followed by possible cause of it and additional symptoms to look out for. That's what it says across this little insert, this chart. So I'm going to go through it really quickly before we get into fingernail divination. (laughs) It's so cool. I didn't know this was even a thing. Okay. So nail health. If your nails are brittle, if they, you know, like they break easily or like the edges kind of chip off when you, you know, accidentally bump them against the wall or something, I know I've had this in the past uh, happen. That means you have iron deficiency as well as hypothyroidism. And I've had hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism within a couple months of each other. My thyroid was going crazy. Woo, talk about some throat chakra stuff. <laughs> so I, uh, I actually went to a naturopathic doctor for this and it took... A long, long time, but six months, I had to go on a very strict diet. He gave me a list of like five foods I could eat and they were all brown colored. I was like so annoyed. I'm like, no, give me something pretty. (laughs) But he's like, this is just your diet for right now. And he gave me a bunch of herbs and I complained my butt off the whole time, (laughs) but I did everything he said, and in six months, I went back to the doctor, and they said, look, the hypothyroid medicine we gave you is working. I'm like, it's not, because I threw the prescription away on the way out of the doctor's office, because I knew I was never going to take it anyway, and he was blown away. He's like, well, what did you do? And I told him, and he couldn't believe his ears, but he did believe the results of my tests, and he said, come back. I think he said in like three months or something, and I did. And my thyroid was still fine. So naturopathy, guys. (laughs) I mean, go to the doctor, see what's going on, and then go to a naturopathic physician to see what else might be going on and what can be, you know, the cure or the, you know, (laughs) the help to reverse things in your body. Because a naturopathic doctor knows how to reverse things while an allopathic doctor knows how to give you medicine for your symptoms of things without quite you're reversing it. So some things they can cure, but it's, I mean, eh, take it with a grain of salt. If you have a bad diagnosis ever, you know, that's just my advice. It's free. So, you know, get what you pay for. (laughs) 
Anyway, uh, things to look out for though, if your nails are brittle, you have to be careful because if you're fatigued and have weight loss and a lot of anxiety, that could be hypothyroidism. So you definitely want to get tested for it. But before you had taken drastic measures, of course, see a naturopathic doctor, uh, maybe see a chiropractor, maybe see a nutritionist. Uh, there might be ways that you can reverse pretty much any disease. So anyway, second one on the list, if your nails are soft or weak, if you could like bend them, Ooh, I had a cousin she could just bend her nails all the way backwards. It was freaky. <laughs> this is, uh, being overexposed to moisture or chemicals. I don't know. Was she exposed to chemicals? God, we did live in LA. There might've been chemicals in her yard. I mean, her parents were not around chemicals a lot, but moisture. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, she moved to Seattle right after and it does rain a lot there, but it, this was when she's in Southern California. So I don't know what she, she was, uh, what happened or nails there, but the additional symptoms to look out for are fatigue and weakness. So that might possibly, they're not saying, but might be mold. Um, so soft or weak, uh, yellow. If your nails are yellow, it could be also thyroid conditions or diabetes or psoriasis. Did you know that those conditions can cause yellowing of your fingernails? Now, if you're a smoker, <laughs> it's the cigarette smoke. Okay. <laughs> I mean, obviously that's one they didn't put there. <laughs> also, your nails could get yellowed from uh, fungus if it's like growing on, if it's like yellow in one part, you know, so you might want to see a, a dermatologist. There's not really a hand or nail doctor, but I would have to say a dermatologist or a general um, family doctor. So yellow, uh, if your nails are yellow, also look for fatigue, anxiety, inflamed skin, and excessive thirst, which would lead to diabetes, of course, or I mean, point to diabetes. So, you know, if your nails are yellow, brittle, soft or weak, or any of the next ones. Now, little black lines, you guys, I had a black line on my thumb. In fact, it's almost grown out now um, from a, about a week or two ago is when it started. And, and that's what made me think about my fingernails because I also have a ridge going across and I was like, man, I got two things on my fingernail. I need to know what the heck this is. And when I looked it up, it, it dawned on me, I'm going to tell you guys this information. So black lines on your fingernail might be uh, melanoma in your fingernail might be psoriasis or might be endocarditis. And it says the symptoms to also look out for are night sweats, nail bleeding, heart murmurs, or inflamed skin. Well, also my cat bit my fingernail. So it could also uh, point towards uh, fingernail trauma. If you've closed your uh, fingernail in a door <laughs> or you, you know, somehow slammed it or, or hit it up against something that can also cause those little tiny black lines. And they usually grow up and out of your fingernail and you could just cut it off and it's over. But, um, my cat, I think it was about a pre-nap violence. <laughs> That's what we've been affectionately calling it. Uh, <laughs> when she bites me and I think she bit my, my thumbnail and that might've been what happened because now it's gone, but I do have a thing going across. So that can also lead towards a heart issue. So I need to continue. It's not on all my nails. It's just on like the one. So it's something I've got to keep in check or at least keep looking out for. Cause these are like telltale signs that are like in the beginning, right? So it's not like at the very end of the disease after, you know, you've got it and you know, your doctor's diagnosed you and you've been on medicine for six years and then it happens to your nails. No, it happens to your nails right away in the beginning before anything else starts. It's like things start to uh, appear and show you what's happening and then you can reverse it immediately if you are diligent. So, all right. So the black lines, what else to look out for? Uh, yeah, we already did that. Sorry. Um, after black lines are ridges, uh, they're good on ruffles. They're terrible on fingernails. <laughs> 
So ridges uh, can mean that you have, if they're vertical, uh, going up and down, it might mean you are iron deficient. You might need to just go eat a steak or a good hamburger. Uh, (laughs) It might mean that you have anemia. So those are if they're vertical, like going up and down. I have lines going up and down, not quite ridges, but I could eat a burger. (laughs) I could go for a burger. In fact, I just had some pretty good uh, lasagna, meat lasagna. So maybe my ridges will start to go away. But if they are horizontal, that might mean that you have kidney disease. So that is very, very, uh, I have read in other places that that means heart disease or, you know, problems with the heart. So just keep an eye on it and maybe change your diet up a little bit, see if that works, maybe talk to, again, your doctor or nutritionist or naturopathic doctor, even somebody who does who does acupuncture, you know, with the needles, uh, that person might be able to unblock some energy because maybe it's just an energetic thing. So, all right. Um, so kidney disease is when it's horizontal. Other things to look out for, if you have the ridges, and then you notice you have these other symptoms, you need to go see someone and check out your health. And here's a list for the ridges. Anxiety, weight loss, swelling feet, excessive urine, horizontal ridges on all 20 toes. Um, (laughs) I have 10 toes. The person writing this article, uh, how many feet do they have? Do they have two rows of toes? (laughs) Two toe rows? It says 20 toes. Oh my God. I think what they mean is toes and fingers. (laughs) Oh my good God. I hope that's what they mean because how the hell do they buy shoes? (laughs) Anyway, I th- we'll just say 20,000 fingers. We'll call it the way it probably should have been written. So if you have horizontal ridges, you know, going, you know, across, um, all 20 fingers and toes, we'll just add fingers in there. <laughs> it can be a sign of mumps. Don't, aren't mumps a sign of mumps? Anyway, or thyroid disease or diabetes. So I'm looking at mine. I don't have it on all 20 of my fingers <laughs> and toes. I have it on one and a little bit slightly on another, and that's it. So I think I'm probably fine. Maybe I should change it up a little bit, have a little more protein, a little more veggies, a little less sugar, maybe, right? So no half moons. Now, the, the half moons, those are at the very bottom of your fingernails and you're supposed to have a healthy looking kind of a whitish half moon at the bottom. It looks like a little rainbow at the bottom of every fingernail. Now I'm looking at my hand and I'm missing one half moon on my pinky finger and almost the, the one on my ring finger is almost completely gone. So what does that mean? It might mean malnutrition, depression, or anemia. I have been very depressed, so that does make sense. The moon is for lovers, they say. (laughs) Well, I don't have one, and maybe that's why I'm depressed. Maybe that's why I have no half moons, right? Anyway, if you are like me and you are missing one or two of your, or all of your half moons, also look into things like fatigue, weight loss, dizziness, unusual craving, and poor eyesight. Ooh, I do have the poor eyesight one, so I'm probably going to have to start taking more vitamins eating better and I'm probably going to go see a specialist as soon as I get a job. All right. The next and last one is when your fingernails peel. Ooh, this creeps me out. I think my little sister had peeling fingernails and my, and my cousin, hers were, would peel off. She would just like peel them. My little sister, I think was peeling them too. I, re- I remember, I don't remember who it was cause it was a long, long time ago, but I remember it creeped me out and made my fingernails hurt because my empathic, energetic nature just, ugh, I don't want to hear that or feel that or know anything about peeling nails. Oh, it creeped me out and I felt so bad for her. Anyway, uh, iron deficiency. Again, with you need more red meat. It's probably not my cousin. I think it was my little sister. She didn't eat meat. She didn't like it. Unless it was in like a, a chorita. She did eat a lot of, um, of uh, Taco Bell. 
Oh, and so did I. We would always like, can we have money for Taco Bell? <laughs> and we ate at Taco Bell quite a bit. But I remember when she's very little, ooh, fig- fingernails are peeling. Ugh. So iron deficiency, again with the anemia. Now you have to look out for other things before you diagnose yourself based on not having a moon on your finger. Fatigue, I mean for peeling on your fingernail, uh, fatigue, paleness, and heart palpitations. That also, uh, those are signs of having an iron uh, deficiency along with peeling of your fingernails. So that's totally creepy, but you know what? I wanted to bring these things up before we get into the other things because, you know, the other things are like, oh, you have a little white spot on this fingernail. Well, that's kind of cute, but you have to know what these things mean, right? Actually, it's funny because this article did not mean what white spots mean, but I do know it could be a fungus. It could be, I don't know why they didn't say it. Actually, that's so strange, but I know, uh, it could be fungus. It could be, um, maybe another thing where you bumped it, but maybe not terribly hard where you have a little bit of a damage section to your fingernail and it'll go away soon. And it also can mean, I think I read a deficiency in vitamins, but I don't know which one. So if we have time at the end, I will go back and look that up or bring it up tomorrow because it's kind of strange. I don't know. What are whitish fingernails? What is that? Anyway, so I wanted to tell you that this is new for me. I have never heard about this before, but did you guys know you could predict the future from your fingernails? This is called Onychomancy. It's spelled O-N-Y-C-H-O-M-A-N-C-Y. Onychomancy or Onychomancy. It looks like Onychomancy, but it's a CK. I, I looked up a pronunciation thing and it did say Onychomancy, but it was being pronounced by a robotic voice. <laughs> so I don't 100% believe it. Anyway, uh, there is a article on kikimancy.com about the meaning of nails in palmistry. And she's talking about the basics. And she says that our seven chakras in our physical body, not of course, counting the five outside of our body or the minor chakras. She says that they're related to our fingernails. In fact, our hands and feet have their very own chakras and they are organized quite, uh, quite similarly to our chakra system in our body. So the bottom of the palm, she says, corresponds to the root chakra and in reflexology, the reproductive organs are stimulated via meridians at the base of the palm. So if you imagine your hands are upright at the bottom would be at the bottom of your spine and then probably at the top, I would say the tip of your middle finger might be related to your crown chakra, but we're going to read more and see what she has to say for herself. So, um, uh, she says the fingertips correspond to the crown chakra. Okay, good. I just said that. (laughs) Well, see, good. I'm on the right path then. So in reflexology, various parts of the skull are stimulated by the top phalange of each finger, which includes of course the nails. So since our energy bodies are fractal forms, the individual nail has its own chakra system as well. The cuticle corresponds to the root chakra energy and the free edge corresponds to the crown chakra. So if you have super long fingernails, does that mean you're more spiritual? (laughs) Okay, probably not. That's kind of strange, right? So each fingernail represents or expresses themes of the finger's planetary ruler. Ooh, this is getting really deep now. On the right hand, the themes are expressed in the outside world through action. On the left hand, the themes are experienced internally. Well, that makes sense. Um, I, I'm going to tell you guys what I learned from uh, Grandma Marion, who I talked about a lot last year. I did uh, every Saturday was an episode dedicated to her for a couple months because I had a lot, a lot about her to talk about. She was extremely spiritual and had a lot of knowledge, more than anyone I've ever met in my life. So I I did learn a lot from her. So, uh, she told me that if you are right handed, your energy will flow into your left side, into your left hand and it'll flow out your right side. And I had read it in books when I was younger too. And she confirmed it for me. 
And she said, however, if you are left-handed, it usually flows the opposite way. So whatever we're seeing on this article, take it with a grain of salt. If you're left-handed, just consider it's possible that it's the opposite way of what was just said. So like if you're right-handed, you pull in energy to your left. So that's incoming energy and the outgoing energy is your right hand. Consider that if you are uh, doing folk magic or you are a witch, especially if you're new to witchcraft and all in magic, all kinds of stuff, magical dealings, you want to have your energy flow in the one way and flow out the other way. And that's going to help you understand the way the energy flows and also the way your spells should be performed with which hand, you know, depending on the way the energy is going, of course. Okay. So the cuticle response corresponds to the root chakra. The free edge corresponds to crown chakra. So, uh, all right, let's see the thumb, your thumbs are ruled by Mars. So the phalanges corresponding to Mars is the yang or the left part of the brain. And the base of the thumb in the palm corresponds to Venus or the yin of the right brain. This forms our holistic consciousness. And so basically the thumb can rule your higher self. Now I'm going to tell you something. If you walk up to somebody and you say, let me see your hand for a minute and they hand you your hand. If you can easily manipulate their thumb without saying anything and their, their thumb is just like, uh, just a floppy dead fish. It's just not really no give to it. That means that they can be easily, um, and probably are easily manipulated by people around them. And you need to let them know that they need to build up their own personal will and, and have more boundaries. Like I know, um, when I first heard about this was when I was in hypnotherapy school and, and they talked about that and I was like, Whoa, that's weird that they're talking about this. And when my husband and I, we were partners in this experiment, you know, we, you had to see where we are with our thumbs. Like mine, mine hardly had any give to it at all, you know, cause it's like, no, I've got a really strong will. So I'm not gonna let anyone manipulate my hand. Right. <laughs> so I wanted to let you guys know that, you know, just, and if you, I think if you work on that one thing, if someone goes to shake your hand and they can't move your thumb, maybe you that might be one way to build boundaries. It's weird because one thing affects the other. So you could do it one way, the top down or the bottom up. All right. So the index finger is uh, ruled by Jupiter and it reflects the expansion of consciousness via philosophy, religion, intellect, global affairs, travel, and law. Jupiter also rules individuation, the independent explorer at the edge of the unknown, which is kind of like this show. <laughs> The middle finger is ruled by Saturn, reflecting restriction of consciousness through boundaries, deprivation, discipline, and authority. That's your middle finger. Your ring finger is ruled by Apollo, the sun god, reflecting the illumination of consciousness through pleasure, creativity, both artistic and reproductive, and also fun. This is where we uh, shine our light. This is how we let our light shine. So, it, you know, that might be why we put a... Uh, ring on the ring finger, uh, because it's ruled by Apollo and we want everything to be bright and shiny in our relationships, right? I'm not sure about that, but I'm guesstimating. So the pinky finger, the little baby finger is ruled by Mercury. Yay. That's <laughs> my planet. <laughs> I mean, it's not my, my actual planet, but it's a planet that rules me as a Virgo also rules Gemini's as well. And this planet reflects the articulation of consciousness through communication, mental activity, and the exchange of ideas. Mercury is, well, the street smarts <laughs> versus uh, Jupiter's book smarts. We'll go into detail later, she says, when you learn the meaning of each nail and differences between right and, and left nails. So, all right, let me see. She says in cartoons, magical beings emit electric bolts from their fingertips. Have you ever seen that? Well, she says it's not far from the truth. Yeah, we do carry energy. And it says that nails have energy just like hair. Ooh, I did not know this. Ooh, this is good information. So the nail is like an antenna dish, and the hair is more like an antenna or wire. They receive and transmit energy from the surrounding environment. You can read every part of the nail. I did not know any of this. This is so cool. So uh, let's see. 
she's talking about the different sections. Uh, the matrix is the root of the fingernail. The cuticle is the protective seal. This corresponds to the root chakra, which includes survival and security. So if you have a dry, cracked left thumb cuticle, you need more receptivity. You need more water element. Probably that will be doubled by the fact that silverfish are falling from the sky. <laughs> Hannah, are you listening? <laughs> so, uh, so you need more receptivity and more flow. You mean, need more surrender to messages from your guides regarding to how you meet your survival needs in a way that's aligned with your higher self. Because you remember the thumb rules a higher self. She's good. I like this lady. Kiki Mancy, by the way. You, KikiMancy.com. The Lunula, which is the little half moon at the bottom. It's um, corresponding to the sacral chakra, the second chakra. And rules your pleasure, emotions, creativity. Lunula is Latin for little moon in astrology. And the moon rules the emotions. Okay. Uh, the nail plate, which makes up basically the whole nail, this, the lower half is closer to the cu- that's closer to the cuticle corresponds to your solar plexus, your third chakra. That's your identity, right? And it rules your personal power. The upper half is your heart chakra. So, oh good. So if I have a little ridge in the identity part of me <laughs> and not in the heart chakra part, maybe it's better. I don't know. Anyway, the hyponychium or the quick is a border or seal that separates your nail from your environment. What is that? That's weird. I've never even heard of that. That's really strange. Okay. So, uh, it corresponds to your throat chakra and the bound at the, as the boundaries of your nails, both the hyponychium and the cuticle Reflect the state of your metaphysical boundaries. She literally said metaphysical. <laughs> Seriously, this morning I was questioning, do I really want to do a show on, on, on fingernails? And God said, yes, you do. And I'm like, what do they have to do with metaphysics though? <laughs> God is always right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So the hyponychium and the cuticle reflect the state of your metaphysical boundaries boundaries. So if you have irregular quicks that have to do with expressing boundaries versus irregular or busted cuticles, which correspond to meeting basic needs like eating enough and feeling safe in your own environment. So, uh, for example, if the mercury or the pinky nail quick is irregular, you have to consider examining how you speak to yourself. Are you supportive of yourself? Pointed quicks I'm looking at mine. Okay, no, it's not. Okay. Pointed quicks can indicate hypersensitivity and fear around expressing yourself. Now, the free edge is the white part that grows out. So that's basically the part that you cut when you cut, cut your fingernails, I guess. And it corresponds to the third eye chakra. And when it's quite long, it does correspond to the crown chakra. Uh, interesting. So my middle fingernail fell off. <laughs> So I don't have a crown chakra on that one. <laughs> I guess that's so strange. And so she does did say that long nails can enhance your intuition. And fun fact, she says in Valley, palm readers grow their nails super long. Oh, I have seen that. I saw a video on that years ago. <laughs> that is very strange. So what about your natural nail shape and how it relates to your personality? Okay, well... If your square nails, if you have square nails, I think I might, I have square hands. If your, your square nails show you that you are pragmatic building and getting it done energy. Square nails make sure that uh, you know or that you show uh, that you're balanced, your stable personal, per, stable personal, stable personality, and you're very pragmatic. Well, Mine might be that. I got to look at the other ones and see, but so far that's probably the one I'm at. I am. Wide nails are practical and more show that you have more volatile uh, energy than stable. If you have wide, short nails, you can be very energetic and you might have a tendency to repress your emotions or that you're sensitive. In, in fact, any aspect of yourself that shows you're sensitive um, 
you might tend to hide from others and you might have anxiety or fits and bursts of emotion. If you have super short, wide nails, it reveals impatience and reactivity. If you have spatulate nails, uh, they're wider at the quick than at the cuticle. Spatulate nails need to create anything and everything. They've got to have their hands on it if it's creative. Rectangular nails are sensible and sensitive. It blends pragmatism with intuition. The proportions of width to length reveal which side of the spectrum that you lean towards. Now, oval nails are sensitive, yin, artistic, intuitive, possibly psychic. And the narrower the oval, the more sensitive and even delicate the personality. Well, I, my, my index finger is an oval like that. That's really strange. I always thought that looked weird. Now I'm kind of happy. I've got at least one of my nails is oval. Round nails are sensitive and intuitive persons belonging to, to those persons, but they're people that tend to be more emotionally stable than the oval nails. So thanks a lot. I just admitted to having one oval nail. I mean, one out of five. Let me see my other hand. Uh, no, it's only kind of ovalish at the top. So only on one hand. That's so strange. <laughs> on my left hand. What does that mean? That's so strange. So internally, I'm I I don't know. Okay. That does make a little bit of sense. Actually. Never mind. Okay. Uh, circular nails value harmony and diplomacy. Oh, that's interesting. Round nails. Hmm. So there's different nail shapes and combinations. So I'm okay. So if you want to go, I'm not going to read more of this. Kikimancy.com. So different nail shapes and combination shapes. So if you have this shape and that shape, it gets kind of long here. And the nail lengths, that's just depending on you at the moment. You could look at what you, uh, how you keep your nails mostly. So I recommend this website. This is a really strange and interesting website. I love it. And she's very straightforward. And you could also probably send her a picture of your nails and have her do a reading for you based on your fingernails which is kind of cool actually. So this next one is futurescapes.com and talks about onicomancy, predicting the future from the fingernails of a person. Now, uh, this is really strange. Uh, I don't know. She's going to talk about this in this article. It doesn't say the name of the, Oh, by Kelly, Kellyani is the name of the person who wrote this article. Uh, I did read on Wikipedia earlier, and I'm just going to say this from the top of my head because I don't have that screen open, that this started, reading people's fingernails started when they, the witches of old would uh, find a young boy who's still a virgin and he's very pure and innocent, and they would put olive oil on his fingernails and make them very, very shiny and buff them out. And with the oily fingernails, they would um, hold them under the sun. And then they would look at the shapes and the shadows that dance across the little boy's fingernails to tell the divination or, you know, to read the future of the person who's paying them to do so. So it's funny that they didn't read the little boy's nails for the little boy. They just use the little boy's nails like a scrying dish. And I just wanted to point that out. That's where this, uh, a word where this originated from, where, you know, what they originally did when they started doing this. So it's very odd, right? Okay. So, um, all right. So they say, of course, you know, there's very, various forms of divination and, uh, let's see, looking at heavenly bodies or weather patterns. I mean, I look at clouds. I'll ask God a question an hour later, look at the clouds to see for the answer. You know, um, there's a lot of different ways to uh, divine <laughs> what's going on right now or what's going to happen in the future, oracle cards, tarot cards, and the like. But they say uh, very few forms will actually look at your own body. You know, of course, there's palm reading, but fingernail reading is very strange, very new to me, but apparently it's old as time. I, I just didn't know about it. <laughs> so it could, uh, let's see. So this type of divination is known as onicomancy. 
and you use the fingernails of a person to interpret their personality and also to kind of provide an inkling of what might what might happen in the future basically uh the term is derived from the ancient greek where onikos means fingernails and manteya refers to divination so um okino manateya would be the original word of this but ra- now they say most commonly uh, the practice of onikomancy the seer or the person who's examining the fingernails uh let's see here Uh, They look for shape and color and markings and unusual features that interpret each of the aspects as clues to the personality. And it is thought that the markings on the fingernails also might presage uh, the future events. So fingers where symbols appeared uh, indicated the nature of coming events. So it depends on what, where the location is on the nail, as well as which nail in what hand. So the higher the symbol is situated on the nail, the sooner it is believed that thing will come to pass. So through Onikomancy, uh, depended on, it, it depends on various cultures. Okay. So there's just different systems of interpretation, apparently, from different countries. And some of them are more or less common in the shape of the fingernails or the general appearance to ascertain character. So in greedy people, they will have crooked fingernails. And if they are raised in the middle, it's a sign of an early death. Oh my God, I'm looking at mine. Okay, no, it's kind of flat. I'm not so lucky, I guess. <laughs> the shape of the half moon on the fingernails at the base also indicate longevity. Uh, the bigger the moon, the longer the life. I used to have massive moons on my fingernails, and now they're a lot more dwindling, except for the ones on my thumbs, which are a lot bigger. So also remember, you know, there's like the spiritual as well as the scientific, because that's what we do in this show. So remember in the beginning what that also means. <laughs> and maybe you might want to have more better nutrition. I know for a fact I need better nutrition. So uh, fingernails can make for certain predictions. If a person dreams about them in their sleep, for example, if you dream of long fingernails, it's a sign of difficulties in your relationship, according to this article. I'm thinking it's a sign of high spirituality, considering it lines up with a crown chakra. (laughs) And short ones, if you dream of having short fingernails, you might get an unexpected gift. Well, that's interesting. Now, if a person dreams of biting their nails, especially all the way to the quick, to the very end, the bottom, it might be a warning you need to see the doctor ASAP. Now, if you dream of polishing your nails... It might be a warning against impulsive behaviors, but if you're filing them, it might mean that your uh, accomplishments will be achieved through your own efforts. Cutting your fingernails in a dream is a sign of prestige and advancement, but if you bend them backwards, oh, that's horrible. My cousin used to do that. Yuck. It's pain. It's a painful symbol of a difficult time coming up ahead that might last a couple months, actually. The appearance of certain marks or white spots can hold certain meanings in more popular forms of onikomancy. Now, certainly, white spots on their fingernails are usually a sign of good fortune. See, I th- and here I thought they were fungus. <laughs> in Germany, it's believed that the number of white spots on a person's nails indicates the years left to live. Well... If that's true, I'm already dead. I'm looking and looking and we're looking. Yeah, I don't have any white spots. I'm dead apparently, according to the... (laughs) It's a good thing I'm not in Germany, I suppose. (laughs) Um, In Great Britain, a white spot on the pointer finger indicates... I say pointed finger and here comes my my little pointed ear friend. Hey, what are you doing, baby girl? (laughs) <laughs> so, okay, in Great Britain, a white spot on the on the pointed finger indicates a new friend. Oh, and here she comes just to lay on my shoulder. Hi, baby girl. I love you. Such a good new friend. And one in the middle finger predicts a new enemy. 
Ooh. Similarly, the appearance of a white spot on the ring finger, that might mean money is arriving or new love. And if you have a little white spot on your little finger, that indicates that the that a journey is in the cards. Hi, baby girl. Oh, little baby girl kissed me. Okay. Um, in fact, a popular ditty also exists in a way of remembering the interpretations. A friend, a foe, money to come, a journey to go. Finally, a white spot on the thumb would foretell the probable receipt of a gift. Oh, but if you have black spots, they're seen as a sign of bad luck or misfortune and yellow specks warn of a death. And remember what we said earlier, black spots, if you slam your finger in the door (laughs) or if you have a fungus, that will cause yellow spots. So uh, popular versions of Onikomancy have survived throughout uh, the years and there are superstitions about fingernails in many places in many cultures a woman who is able to cut her right hand fingernails with her left hand is supposed to have the upper hand in her marriage well don't we all do that i could cut both hands with both the hands like what that's weird in many cultures people are still forbidden to cut a baby's fingernails or even to bite them off upon the belief that the child will then grow up to be a thief oh man I shouldn't have cut my kids' fingernails when they were babies. I, I did used to cut my the fingernails of my daughter, and one time I made her bleed, and she never let me do it again. So, I don't know. Maybe I saved her? I don't know. It's so... Oh, it made me cry for... Oh, I was so sad. I'm still sad about it, and it's been 20 years. <laughs> so, okay. Um, that's strange. I did not know that. If I had known that, I never would have cut their nails. In Japan... Girls are discouraged from nail biting by the warning of difficult births. Then again, in many cultures, it is considered to be very unlucky to cut fingernails on certain days of the week. Ooh, see, there's a lot more to this fingernail thing than I knew. One reason why there's so many folklore and superstitions appear to be based on fingernails. Perhaps it's because they're just curious parts of the body. In, of course, in primitive times, yeah, that must be like, what does this mean? What does this mean? Why do they keep growing? What's going on over here? Because <laughs> they're all different and they all change, right? So um, you could like separate it from your body or cut it off without apparent discomfort. The fingernails are strange, right? So it's kind of a magical quality to this body part. And fingernail clippings feature in many occult practices from around the world. This, the use of fingernail clippings and black magic spells ensure that the spell affected the correct person. <laughs> so on the other side, fingernails are utilized in healing rituals and the clippings from the person who's ill are burned or buried. And in this way, it's hoped the illness will also be, well, buried and, and you know, gone, right? You, you destroy the nail, you destroy the illness, if you name it as such, I suppose. And that will help the patient, of course, to get better. So the association of fingernails to the personality and the fortunes of a person is underlined by Onikomancy. And they say it might not be such a fanciful idea, after all, considering that medical practitioners consider the appearance of fingernails as an important indicator of a person's health, which is what we learned right now in the beginning of this uh, part of the show. So... uh, Did you guys know that your fingernails grow up to a millimeter per week and they're composed of layers of protein, sulfur, and keratin? When you have problems with your fingernails, it does indicate a potential nutritional problem, disorder, or illness that can occur in the rest of your body. And it can be the first indication that there is a problem. If the whole nail is white, it can mean kidney or liver disorders, or even anemia. Have you guys ever seen somebody who's really sick and their fingernails have white splotches? I have seen that. I've seen it in people with lupus. And I have seen it because my my aunt, or yeah, I guess it's my aunt and my uncle. They both got lupus at the same time, which was very weird. And they were having problems with their fingernails. And that was something I absolutely did notice. 
So if, if you have yellowy nails, they say it could be liver issues, diabetes, lymphatic problems, or respiratory issues. Nails that are dark might tell you that you've got a vitamin B12 deficiency. And also, you know, if you also don't have any energy and you're fatigued as well. But uh, brittle nails can show iron deficiency or thyroid problems. Red at the bottom means connective tissue disorder. If the nails are brittle, soft, with no shine or half moon, it might be hyperthyroidism. Then again, ridges on the nail can indicate a thyroid problem or even an infection. Fingernails that are too thick might be a circulation problem in the vascular system. And if the nail beds are deep and blue, that's pulmonary obstruction or emphysema. Also, it's, it's asthma or problems with high altitude. So if you're super healthy and you go to very high altitude and they turn blue, that can mean that you're losing oxygen. You need to get back down to a lower elevation immediately. So um, also having issues breathing because that's the first clue. <laughs> you know, actually, your fingernails like a second or third clue. So anyway, all the clues relating to your fingernails should be taken in conjunction with other bodily symptoms and can only really truly be certified or diagnosed by a real doctor so that there will be very little doubt as to what's going on. But the ancient practice of oh, nicomancy survives and to a different purpose than, you know, your health, of course. Now, there's one last article that looked kind of interesting. All right, so they're saying that uh, Mantea means fortune telling and Onikos means fingernail. So, fingernail fortune telling is what you hear when you hear Onikomancy or Onimancy or Onikomantia. Onikomancy. And this is all according to aminoapps.com under pagans and witches. That's the section of this website. <laughs> so. This is an ancient divination using fingernails, they say. Consists of watching the reflection of sunlight on the oil fingernails of an unpolluted boy, then interpreting the symbols that appear. <laughs> See? It's like crystal balls on the tips of little tiny boys' fingernails. Uh, why does it have to be a boy? That's so strange. I'm shocked it doesn't say, you know, a redhead boy with 20 freckles on each cheek, you know? It's like, why is it so specific? I'm surprised it's not more specific. <laughs> Like it happened once and everyone heard the story. It's funny because a picture that's on this page is of a, of a woman with red hair and you just see her fingernails sticking out and she's touching her uh, shoulder lightly with uh, daisies in her hand. It's actually a pretty beautiful piece of art. If you want to check it out, again, that's aminoapps.com under Pagans and Witches. So, all right. Um, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, yeah, so the term is also used for method of chiromancy, consisting of reading health and character from fingernails. So chiromancy is the other word for this, I guess. Now, this is not a reading of the individual's fortune, but every person will see different things in the subject fingernails. So even though they're studying the fingernails, it's up to the reader's fortune um, or, or who's reading the person's fortune, I guess. So, uh, the fingers where symbols appear allegedly indicate the nature of coming events. So the location of the symbols on the nail will allow you to date them, you know, so you know when it's coming and how far off it is. So the higher the symbol is situated on the nail, the closer to you the events are in the future. The symbols are almost, almost the same as tea leaf symbols. So a separate guide is not needed. White spots on our fingernails are regarded as a sign of good fortune. Good, that's the second place we read that. So it's believed that the number of white spots indicate the years left to live. I mean, <laughs> like if you're 20, I mean, does that mean you're supposed to have 50 white spots because you could die at 70 or, you know, that doesn't make too, too much sense. Maybe when you're super old and then you have uh, those white spots, that might mean what that, you know, that might be something. But when you're young, I would say maybe not really look for those. Don't really want those because, again, it could be a uh, malnutrition thing. <laughs> so white spots on the fingernails. Hmm. Let's see. If you have a white spot on your pointer finger, that might mean a new friend. The middle finger, new enemy. And on the ring finger, they say money or new love. 
and on the baby finger, <laughs> a journey. Oh, well, okay. So it's a little bit different than the other website. And remember the verse, a friend, a foe, money to come, a journey to go. So there we go. A uh, white spot on the thumb means that we're about to receive a gift. So see, just like the other one. So that's good. <coughs> it's always nice to get confirmation. Black spots are a sign of bad luck or misfortune and yellow specks warn of a death. <coughs> see, the other one said just yellow fingernails. This one said yellow specks. Very interesting. And the shape and the general appearance are used to ascertain your character. And again, it says about the greedy fingernails and the bigger the moon, the longer the life. It almost seems like they kind of copy from each other, huh? It's almost identical to the one I just read, so we're not going to read the rest of this one. Yeah, I think they copied it. That's so strange. (laughs) I'm going to look. Did I really just read that exact same thing in two different places? Oh, my gosh. They're probably just copying Wikipedia. We're all just copying the same thing. Anyway, well, there you have it. I Isn't that weird? I had no idea about... I, I had no idea about this of Nicomancy. Did you guys know about it? Have you ever used it to uh, read your fortune or somebody else's? Have you ever oiled the fingernails of a little boy and held him under the sunlight to see about your own future? (laughs) That's like one of the most odd things I've ever heard in my life. (laughs) I should do this with my kitty cat. Can I I look at your fingernails? She's like, I don't. Her her ears just started to shake for a second. second. I think that means no. (laughs) No, those those fingernails of my cat are meant for scratching me during the pre-nap violence stage of her day. (laughs) <laughs> well, that's it, guys. That's that's all she wrote for this uh, episode of Metaphysical Soul Speak, the podcast. I will be back with all original and unique programming, just like always. And even though, and I'm sorry about this, that my episodes have been very off kilter this week. It's a bunch of different things in a row, including the uh, ongoing two-hour caroling, non-mobile Christmas carolers outside my window directed at us <laughs> at our apartment with a very loud karaoke machine every single night, two hours. It's like, oh man, it's always the time I sit down to record the show and then that starts. It's like, oh no, oh no. So <laughs> we'll see where how far we get with uh, catching up. I, by Friday, I should be all caught up and you will have your five episodes for this week. And I'm still debating on whether or not I will take next week off or if I will still have five shows next week and then Christmas week off. I'm still trying to figure that one out. I will let you know in the next two episodes what will happen with that. All right, that's it for now. Thank you for your continued faith in my show and your confidence in my abilities And I believe tomorrow, in the next episode anyway, I will be doing a channeling of some sort. I don't know who yet, but it should be very interesting. All right, that's it, guys. I love each and every one of you. Thank you for being on this spiritual journey uh, with me. I'm glad we're all doing this together. It's rather exciting being here at the junction juncture of the Ascension, which is pretty awesome. And that's it. I will... uh, be back and we will connect later but if you want to connect with me in the meantime please write me at mermaidgirl888 on instagram that is the easiest way to get in touch with me and let me know if you would like that health hypnosis audio i created and if you also would want a reading or anything else just let me know and i will get right to that so that's it i'm signing off with peace and joy in the high vibes of the holy fifth dimension. Till next time, guys. Peace. Metaphysical Soul Speak is run on sponsors and listener support. This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined 
To support my efforts and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. Thank you.